Hey guys, Jordan here. You may remember a little while ago I looked at the Palette 5090. Now I also referenced the Palette 5080 in that video too, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. More specifically, this is the Gaming Pro V1. Now this was kindly sent out by Scan Computers UK, one of the leading UK retailers that sell everything from PC components, pre-built 3XS systems, pro audio video gear, instruments, and much, much more. And I'll link them down in the description box below for you to check out. Now I'm going to do this video a little bit differently from my usual reviews. Please let me know your thoughts once you watch this in the comments box below. We're going to have a closer look at the card with some B-roll and then I'll get straight into the testing, hopefully to keep the video a bit more concise. So the Palette 5080 Game Rock is built on NVIDIA's 4 nanometer Blackwell architecture with 10,752 cores, a 2,295 megahertz base and a 2,617 megahertz boost clock. It comes with 16 gigabytes of memory, that's GDDR7 on a 256-bit bus, and is a triple slot card measuring 332 mil in length. Now, Pallet recommends an 850 watt as a minimum, and for display options, you've got three DisplayPort 2.1B and one HDMI 2.1B, and up to support for 8K resolution or up to four monitors. Now, starting off with the numbers, I'm going to roll the charts while I talk through them, since there's a fair bit to cover. At 1440p, the 5080 Gaming Pro holds its own incredibly well. In Crisis Remastered, it pulled a 297 FPS average, which actually edges past the 4090 Tough Edition in my testing. Dirt 5 came off at 303 FPS, Cyberpunk 245, Shadow of the Tomb Raider just shy of 250, and the 1% loads were consistent across all titles, meaning the gameplay felt really smooth, especially during those heavier moments. Stepping up to 4K, there's obviously the usual drop, but it doesn't fall apart. The 5080 keeps pushing triple figure averages and most titles still outperforming or matching the 4080 Super, and in some cases comes surprisingly close to the Asus 4090 Tough. Now, for example, Dirt 5 in 4K averaged 249 FPS, Cyberpunk we saw 197, Far Cry 6, 174, all really solid results. Now, for ray tracing performance, it's strong, but obviously not quite the same loop we'd see for a 5090, but that's twice the price of this card. And at 1440p ray trace, Cyberpunk averaged 68 frames, which is very playable. The 1% low stayed down below 50, so it's still smooth. That's with no DLS applied, though, so that's just raw performance. Once you bring DLSS or frames it into the mix, you'll run into triple figures again. Now, DLS4 can still be a little bit hit or miss, but for pure rasterization, this thing's just an absolute weapon. In terms of the thermals, I did my usual benchmarking for the thermal tests. It doesn't have a hot spot like the 5090 that we previously reviewed, so I've done my usual uh, estimations of 15 degrees over the normal average temp, which gives us a high of 86.6, moving the ambient would sit at 62.2, so perfectly within reason for this level of GPU. The fan noise is minimal unless you really start to hammer it. 1440p, they stay really quiet, but when you get to 4K, they're really intensive ray trace workloads. They do ramp moderately. I didn't notice any drastic core one though, which is good. Plus I also test almost this distance apart when I actually test the cards. So that's obviously a very good result. In terms of power draw, we peaked at 560 watts during Cyberpunk 4K ray traced, which is noticeably more efficient while still delivering great performance. The cooler itself feels fairly solid. There's a fair bit of plastic, but the metal backplate does give it some decent rigidity. So all in all, it's not just a cut down version of the 5090. The Gaming Pro is seriously capable in its own right, especially by trading blows with the 4090 in a few titles and also stays well ahead of the 4080 Super. Also does that while drawing less power and keeps the thermals in check. If you're going to be gaming at 1440p or 4K and you want that top end experience without spending the full two grand on the 5090, this thing is definitely in the sweet spot. Now, at the time of filming, this is actually one of the cheapest 5080s that you can buy. When I reviewed the 5090, that was also one of the cheapest 5090s you could buy. And being that this is the second palette card I've reviewed, they're two for two, seriously impressed so far. They offer great performance while not being mentally expensive like some of the others on the market. So a big thank you to Scam for Computers for sending this out and making this video possible. If you want to grab one or check the pricing, I'll drop a link down below. If there's anything else you want to know that I haven't covered, then please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please get subscribed if you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.